Good morning. Uh, welcome to Bethel Church. My name is Mike Kitchings. I'm the pastor here. I'm also with Paula, our administrator, and Phil and Dave are helping with the tech. It's great to have you with us. We're broadcasting live from the church building this morning. The building is not the church. You are the church, meeting together in your homes and with us here in the building. This service is going to take about 40 minutes. We're going to have some news of the church community. Uh, we're also going to have some prayer and some songs, and I'm going to give a short message. I think probably the best way to benefit from the service this morning is to participate as if you're in church. So when we pray, bow your heads and pray together. When we sing, please participate, and we'll all be doing it together. So great to have you with us. Let me start with a prayer. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you are everywhere. Uh, this morning this is very unfamiliar to us, but Father we pray that you will meet with us as we all meet together at the same time. And please strengthen us at this time. Lord, we really need your presence and we thank you for one another and we pray that this morning you will really bless us as we meet in the name of Jesus. Amen. So over to Paula at the Bethel News Desk. Um, this is a bit different, but it's good to be together. This is something that we're hoping to um, uh, share each week in order to help keep us all updated with news from around the church and the latest developments in the coronavirus and how that's affecting us as a church. And also to help us pray for each other in an informed way and just really to help us stay connected together. So, things to share with you this week. Obviously, it has been quite an unusual week. Um, we wanted to make sure that everybody is aware that all of the face-to-face -face meetings and activities at Bethel, unfortunately, have had to be cancelled for the foreseeable future, obviously due to the um, government advice on the best way to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. So that's just to confirm that all meetings and activities that would normally take place both at the church and in people's homes and elsewhere, none of those are happening. Uh, but that means we are now trying to come up with creative ways of still meeting together virtually. So obviously this weekly morning service broadcast is one of those key things. And we're also looking at ways to get community groups together and maybe some of our other groups I know that the Lounge Young People's Group actually met together online on Friday. So please um, keep your eye out for details of that and um, developments. Uh, we will be sharing a lot on email, so please make sure that you do check your emails regularly. Um, next week, we're hoping as part of this broadcast to do something for the children and young people in our fellowship. So unfortunately, we haven't been able to put that in place this week, but we do hope to do that next week. So look out for details of that. Also, just to let you know that every week on Tuesday at noon, there will be a team meeting to discuss the coronavirus situation and um, to talk about how we respond and how we keep communicating as a church and how we care for each other. So that's going to involve the church leadership and staff and people from the Bethel care team. So please do pray for that meeting every week at 12 o'clock. And if there are issues that you feel need to be addressed, then please do feed that into the leadership team so it can be discussed at those meetings. We also just wanted to make sure everybody is aware that sadly, um, Pat Ellenden's funeral, which was meant to take place on Tuesday, sadly that can no longer happen because we're not able to meet together. But the immediate family will be meeting here on Tuesday afternoon just to have a short Thanksgiving service and Mike will be leading that. So please do pray for David and the family, especially on Tuesday. Pray for Mike as he leads that time. We are also hoping that we will be able to record all of that service and make it available for Bethel folk afterwards. So again, please um, look out for details of that this week. We also wanted to 
share that one of the key things that we are doing in response to the coronavirus situation as a fellowship is to make sure that the older folk in our fellowship, um, particularly those who are having to self-isolate, are cared for. So the Bethel Care team have assigned an individual to each one of those older folk to keep in regular contact with them, to make sure that we are providing the practical support they need, and also to keep them updated on what's happening in the church, particularly if they're not um, using email. That's been coordinated by Fiona Brooks. So if you feel that you have capacity maybe to get involved and to help support some of our older folk or those who are self-isolating, please do contact Fiona Brooks. I'm sure she would appreciate help. And then finally, um, we also as a church really want to use this opportunity to show love and care and support for our local neighbourhood, particularly again for those who are having to self-isolate, might be living on their own, might be afraid. So a leaflet has gone out this week. It's been put through all of the letterboxes in the houses in the neighbouring roads. I believe about 300 have been delivered. And that is offering practical support and also prayer. And it's also given people the link for this online broadcast if they want to join in with that. If, again, you feel you have capacity to maybe help with offering some of that practical support, so it's things like getting shopping for people, maybe phoning people who are isolated, please get in touch with Sharon Coates as she is coordinating that. Thank you. I'd like to welcome latecomers. So, Thompson, Sullies, great to have you with us this morning. Uh, this has also got some personal news of the fellowship for us and some things to pray for. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So we thought it would be good to share news from some individuals and families in the church who've maybe been particularly affected by coronavirus outbreak. Um, and so we're really pleased, first of all, to um, report that Sophie is back home and is recovering well from her appendix operation. The whole Feeney family are together now um, self-isolating in order to try and protect Sophie's health. Her next chemotherapy treatment is due on Wednesday this week, so please pray that that can go ahead and that the whole family do stay well throughout this period of her treatment. We're also really pleased to report that um, the two folk who we know of in our fellowship who have been self-isolating because they had coronavirus symptoms, that's Alison and Andy, they are both better now, so we really thank God for that. But please remember their families who still have a few more days of self-isolation to go. So, so do remember them in your prayers. And we're going to move on now to um, a prayer focus. And we thought it might be helpful each week maybe to have a specific theme or topic to think about. And we felt it would be appropriate this week to focus on those in our fellowship who are involved in health work. And so are really on the front line of tackling the coronavirus situation. And I'm going to mention just five people, that there may well be others in our fellowship as well, but five people who are health workers who we can really pray for. Um, so firstly, we have May, who is a community matron, and she goes into some of the local homes for older people, providing health care for them. So very much on the front line with vulnerable people. We have Nay, who is a nurse working in one of the local hospitals. Then there's Michelle, who coordinates support and care for older people living with mental health issues, particularly dementia. We have Lucy H, who is a community palliative care nurse. She works from the Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice. And so she, again, is working with people in very difficult situations and who are very vulnerable. And then, of course, we also have Andy, who is responsible for the budgets and the spending of several of our local hospitals. So huge responsibility and pressure in this time, and he also does some GP work. And before we pray, I'm going to read a quote um, from some prayer information that we will be sending round soon. And we've got some quotes for specific prayer needs from some of those health workers. And May has shared, it has been very stressful. We are all feeling vulnerable and under real pressure to make the right decisions. And the care home staff are scared. Please pray that we would get the necessary stock of protective clothing. And please pray for God's real protection and his courage to work with limited resources. So that gives us some specific things to pray for. 
So we're going to go into a time of prayer now, and I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then Mike will lead us in prayer. So let's pray together about some of these issues. Father God, we thank you that we can turn to you in prayer. Lord, in this time of crisis and fear and uncertainty in our nation, we praise you that you are still God over all. Lord, you are never changing. You are in control and you are good and you are loving. Lord, please reassure us. Help us to really believe this in our hearts and to cling to you. Please, Father, be our hope and please give us your peace. Lord, we pray particularly for those who are isolated and for all of us as we're having to reduce contact with others. Please draw us close to you. I pray that we would know your presence. I particularly pray that for those who are stuck indoors on their own. May they really be aware of you with them. And Father, we want to pray that you would protect us, that you would keep us healthy, that you would provide what we need, and Lord, we pray for ourselves as a church fellowship. Please keep us strong. Help us to find ways to stay connected, to keep engaged with each other and to keep encouraging each other. Lord, we thank you so much for the technology that is available to us that makes such a difference in this time. Help us to use it creatively. And Lord, we pray for our church leaders that you would give them wisdom, and give them courage and creativity as well in these difficult times. Lord, I pray that none of our fellowship will be forgotten, that each of us would be loved and cared for and would know that. Father, we also want to pray for the leader of our nation, uh, for Boris Johnson, for his cabinet, for his advisors. Father, please fill them with your wisdom. Show them what to do. Please help them to take the steps that will help to protect us as a nation. And we just pray for your mercy that you would stop the spread of this virus. And Lord, through this time, we ask that many people would realise their need of you and would turn to you and would find you, would come to know your forgiveness, your salvation, your peace, your hope. Lord, please use this and help us to reach out to people, to use opportunities to love them and to share your hope and your goodness with them. Help us to love our neighbours in sacrificial ways. And Lord, within our own fellowship, we pray particularly for David Ellenden and the family. Lord, comfort them in their loss of Pat. And as they meet together on Tuesday, I pray that it would be a really special time, not only of sadness, but actually of joy and thankfulness as well for Pat's life. We also want to pray for the Feenies. Lord, please keep them well. Please protect them. I pray that Sophie will be well enough to have her treatment and that it would be really successful. And Lord, we pray for those in our congregation who are health workers on the front line. We particularly mention May and Michelle and May and Lucy and Andy. Give them strength, give them compassion. Please protect their health, give them energy and really use them to bring comfort and healing and hope to people. So Lord, we just commit every aspect of this very difficult situation that we find ourselves in. We commit it to you and we praise you and we praise you that you are with us and that you are love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Repeat it with me. Our Father, Father who is in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your will be done. Your kingdom Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh, have you seen Nick anywhere? Um, no, I haven't seen him all week, actually. We don't know where Nick is. If anyone's seen Nick, please drop us a line. We'd love to know where he is. Go to read from the Bible now. If you have a Bible with you, please turn up Psalm 46.
Psalm 46. God is our strength and refuge, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She shall not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46 is an old song that they used to sing back in the day. And I'm sure you can see why I've chosen it this morning. In Psalm 46, everything is in turmoil. It's like there's been a big earthquake and the mountains seem to be in the midst of the sea. The sea is surging onto the land. The hills are trembling like frightened children. What seemed most stable has been thrown up in the air. And I guess... That's what it seems like with COVID-19 virus. Everything has been disrupted. We've lost our normality. Uh, our routines are, are broken. Our social life feels like it's on hold. There's no sports to watch, no gym to go to. Uh, perhaps our work is disrupted. Some of us are excessively busy. Others of us, our work is drying up. And for some of us, we're worried about our income and how we will get through. Our institutions are strained and the global economy is in difficulty. Uh, and we're worried about what's going to happen. It's like everything's been thrown up in the air. And all of us will be feeling unsettled. It's unsettling, isn't it? When the things that we assumed were fixed are taken away. And some of us will be feeling fearful. Fearful about what will happen. Worried about relatives and friends who might be at risk. And over time, I think we will also be feeling thoughtful. We will reflect on this time and we will realise that our lives are much less stable than we thought. Now this old song, Psalm 46, anticipates crises just like this one where everything's thrown up in the air. And it also tells us there's one reality that we need right now that is absolutely rock solid. It tells us, firstly, there is safety in God's power. When everything is shaken, God is not. And God is the reality that each of us therefore need right now. God is a refuge. God is like an, an age-old panic room where you run in times of danger to be safe. Not only is God there for protection, but God gives us the active strength that we need. 
Our resources are stretched, but God's resources are undepleted. And the song is written from experience of people who knew that God was an ever-present help in time of trouble. He is always there, ready to be found, and he is always enough. I'm sure we will all look back and remember this moment. I think our children particularly will talk about this time. They'll say in years to come, do you remember that time where we couldn't go to school, where we weren't allowed out together, where our clubs were cancelled? Do you remember what we did? And I think they'll also remember the impression they got from parents and from adults about how to react to times of crisis. The Bible is telling us if we're drawing on God, who is our refuge and strength, says, therefore, we will not fear. If you're drawing on the solid rock of God, the rock of ages, you will resist fear. You won't need to panic by Uh, Your your kids will see you enduring in faith. One of the things COVID-19 is showing us is that so much of our lives are more fragile than we thought. So many things that make up our normal lives can be taken away. In the end, there's only one thing that cannot be taken away, and that is God. Because God is beyond this world, and his power exists outside of this world, but wonderfully, he makes it available to us as we live with all the churn of life in this world. So COVID-19, I think, is showing us if God is not your security, then you've got no security. But if God is your security, then you are absolutely safe because God is a refuge, a protection, and God gives you all the strength that you need. So let this situation drive you to God because there is safety in God's power. In the second verse of the psalm, the picture changes. So it moves from everything being turned upside down. Do you see in verses 2 and 3, the waters surging to a picture of peace. There is safety in God's presence. To quiet streams in verse 4. God's community can be at peace no matter what is happening around them because they have a source of renewal and strength. In capital cities in those days, they were built around a central river or stream so that if the city came under siege and was, there were invaders all around, within the city... You could still be refreshed and you could still draw life from the stream that ran through. And for God's community, there is a stream, it says, that makes us glad through his presence. Whatever else is happening around us. Verse 5 says, God's community shall not fall. In the old versions, it said, shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. The mountains are being uh, churned up. The, The waters are surging, but it says God's community shall not be moved. How come? Because God is within her. She shall not. There is safety in God's presence. 
Now, as individual Christians, God is within us, and we know his presence. But it's talking about God being within us as the community of his people. We're not together physically this morning, and and we may not be for some time, but we remain together in Jesus, and his spirit still lives within his people. The virus hasn't changed that reality at all. In some ways, it's going to be an interesting time. All of us are going to develop new habits. Maybe you'll be doing more together as a family. Maybe perhaps you'll be praying more together as a family. That would be a great outcome from this time. But can I encourage you to resolve to keep meeting, to keep expressing the fact that you're part of God's community, to keep logging on, because it's when we meet together that we most normally experience God's presence. And if you drop off from meeting together and being in contact, we may not notice so please, at the start of this, as we, as we get more isolated, please resolve to keep doing church together. But my heart for Bethel at this time is that we'll be able to serve the community around us. One of the good things that's happening is uh, completely voluntarily, there are all kinds of groups springing up to provide support to older people and to others who are self-isolating. That's been great to see that happening. One of the challenges, I think, is going to be sustaining that effort to care. I really want Bethel Church to be a big part of that. And I hope we will be able to sustain it because there is a stream that makes glad the city of God We have the joy of the Lord that is our strength, that sustains us, whatever else is going on around us. So today, as we met together, we were able to pray the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is not a personal prayer so much as a a family prayer. Our Father in heaven. Isn't that fantastic? We pray in this situation to our Father in heaven. And as we pray this prayer that that we have through our relationship with God in Jesus, to me, as I've been praying it uh, this week, it's just uh, come alive. I I have a Father in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. You realise how how fragile that is and and, and, uh, how dependent we are on God. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the power and the glory. So, resolve to keep meeting with God's people because there is safety in God's presence. And lastly, there is safety in God's purpose. There's been a lot of planning going on and trying to react to the latest situation. Please be praying for our leaders uh, who are really putting in the hours and others who are planning, the NHS and civil servants, who are trying to provide guidance to us all at this time. Uh, And let's face it, uh, trying to keep up with what's beyond our control. And that's been true in the church. We've been planning as we go along, as have many other organisations. This uh, situation is not under our control. We, we are reacting. But it is under God's control. It, it may be out of our control, but it's not out of his control. Uh, and we, we don't know what's happening here, but we do know there is purpose in what God permits. 
Look at the last verses. The psalm finishes on a call in times of crisis, not for people to do things, not for human activity, but for us to observe what God will do. Verse 10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We've only just begun, and I don't know how you're coping with enforced restriction. Uh, I'm still working pretty hard, but my movements are more limited than usual. Already I'm feeling a little bit of cabin fever. And on the internet, there's all kinds of creative suggestions to what you can do at home, uh, workouts to keep fit, uh, creative things you can do with small children to keep yourselves busy. But what about this, verse 10? Maybe this is a chance God is giving you to be still. Because there's a connection between being still and knowing the reality of who God is. The reality of God's majesty, someone said, doesn't hit us until we stop scurrying around and are still. And that's really hard for some of us, isn't it? It doesn't come naturally at all. But whatever actions you're doing and whatever creative things you're trying to keep life going, make this also a time to be still. Time to remember we are not in control of our lives. But God is. A time to remember he is supreme and majestic. We are not supreme. So make this a time to be still and to let God's majesty take hold of you. Because there is safety in God's purpose. I've not seen a global crisis like this during my lifetime. And uh, we're all caught up in it. And even if we know that it will pass, it is massively unsettling, isn't it? Well, if you've come to God through Jesus, know this. You're absolutely secure in God. And ultimately, you're caught up in his purposes. So be still and know that he is God. Take refuge in him. Draw on his strength. The Lord God Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob, uh, and Jacob, he was a loser at times, wasn't he? The God of Jacob is our refuge. Draw on him. And if you do that, you'll be resourced to lead your family and to be a source of strength and support for others. We're going to sing a couple of songs now, actually. So on the screen, uh, two songs will follow on from each other. Both songs that express our trust and confidence in God at this difficult time. So I'd suggest that you join in at home. Uh, If that feels odd, understand we'll all be doing it together and feeling odd together. So join in at home and let's worship God with these two songs. Yet not I, then the Lord's my shepherd. Thank 
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with God, and my cup it overflows with joy, I feast on His Trust in Jesus, and I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm going to say a thanks to all the volunteers. Times like this, you become really aware of how many people volunteer at Bethel and the great work that they do. So thanks particularly this morning to Dave and Phil for helping with the service and for those who are organising care and other things at, at the moment. Please do keep in touch. If you have questions or comments about the technology, please contact Dave McKnight. If uh, there's any care needs that you're aware of, uh, please contact Fiona Brooks. And if you're able to help support people in the neighbourhood here, then please be in touch with Sharon. And do look out for an email from us in the week, keeping you updated about other things that will be happening. Oh, I've just had a text in from Nick. Nick says,
Hi guys, just been to Southampton, sourcing my vegetarian avocados. Lou said we were running out. So sorry I couldn't be with you this morning, but hope to see you next week. So we hope to see you next week, and we hope Nick will be here too. Have a good week.